better than that. That was a C plus. Are we ready to start the pitch sessions? Excellent. Let me tell you a little bit about these pitch sessions. These are early stage companies from all over the world. So please give them a lot of love and respect as they come on this stage. Uh, they have to have a female in the founding team with less than one million in funding. And the pitch finalists that you'll see here, like some of these pitch finalists that we've done before have gone on to raise like $1.2 million, been part of things like Y Combinator, acquired by Yahoo. So this is kind of a big deal, right? This is, this is a, yeah, okay, yes, you can, wow, now people are getting energized. They want to applaud for everything. I like you, sir, because you did the photo booth and you're applauding for everything. This is why we need more men involved with men's and women's organizations. Yes, you're not the enemy, you're part of us. We like you, we want to call you out. So at this point, I would like to welcome all of the judges to come on stage and take their seats, and I will introduce them once they are seated. So are we ready to roll the video and get the judges up here? Give them some applause. Music, video. All right, am I gonna have to dance? Is that, is that what's happening? Keep applauding. No, that's not gonna work, yeah. We did have a video and music planned, but apparently that didn't happen, so I'm just gonna have to use my words. So here we go, these are the judges, they're, they're seated. I'm gonna um, uh, give you a little gossip about all of them. So, uh, the, and, and you, can, you can chime in if I get your name. Yeah, good gossip, like positive gossip. Go we wanna t reclaim the word gossip, it's not always a bad thing. Uh, so Andrea Zurich, did I pronounce that right? Yes. Uh, founder, founding partner of XG, is that correct? Correct. Top 25 tech angels by Business Week, that's a pretty big deal. And uh, XG Ventures has invested in um, over 46 companies. 56. And 56, oh, it grew in the last five seconds, that's cool. From when I, and, and 15 exits, that's what I had. 16. Oh my gosh, happening, did it just happen on your phone? Oh my gosh, that's awesome. So please give her a round of applause. And you can ask her about her open wheel race car series afterwards. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, your next judge is Andy White. Andy White, please. Uh, yes, that's Andy White, uh, one of the two guys. A partner in the Vegas Tech Fund. He's an entrepreneur, angel investor, and car nut which is different from corn nuts, I think. So uh, he's the founder of the School Center, which was uh, sold in uh, 2011, and now it's Blackboard, correct? Blackboard. What's that? Part of Blackboard. Pl part of Blackboard. You have to get the specific words right or the judges get mad. Uh, he's uh, very interested in building community in downtown Las Vegas, so that's a really cool thing to talk to him about. Please uh, welcome Andy White, everyone. Uh, Albert uh, Wenger, Wenger, correct. Uh, he's a partner at Union Square Ventures, founded five companies, and when he was 18, this is cool, he won the German National Computer Science Competition. That is super awesome and nerdy, I love it. Uh, summa cum laude from Harvard, a PhD in information technology from MIT. Go Beavers, I'm also an MIT. Oh, that wasn't like some kind of slur. That was our, <laughs> our mascot, okay, the Beavers, the MIT Beavers. Please give it up for Albert Wenger, everyone. <laughs> Jenny Fielding, yes, two hands, I like that. Uh, from, uh, she has, um, led uh, the digital, digital ventures for BBC Worldwide, or she currently leads. She established Switch Mobile, which she sold, and uh, an advisor on investments um, in mobile, gaming, and uh, other industries as well. Please welcome Jenny Fielding from BBC Worldwide. <laughs> Joy Marcus, correct? That's, I got your name right, that's an easy one. Uh, managing director of Gotham Ventures, invests in seed stage, mostly digital media, and she's a VC mom. That's, that's, my, that's my blog. That's your blog, VC mom. Please give a round of applause to Joy Marcus. 
See, what, wasn't that painless? Positive gossip, positive gossip about you guys. So this is what's gonna happen next. We've got uh, the pitches coming up and they'll go up rapid fire one after the other. I'm not gonna do a lot of introduction. They will have five minutes to pitch and then there'll be five minutes of Q&A rapid fire. I'm watching the clock. So I might have to play the bad lady and cut people off because we want it to be fair for everyone. So are we ready? Ready for the, ready for the first person? You ready? What's it? Are we ready? Okay, please make it really big. A lot of love for the first pitch uh, from Abby Post, Cynthia Seamus, everyone. Give her a round of applause. Hi, how are you guys? I'm Cynthia Seamus. I'm the founder and CEO of Abby Post. Abby Post is revolutionizing plus size fashion with the perfect fit. Now, by show of hands, how many of you know a woman who wears a plus size? Come on, put them up. Okay, there's a few of you who don't have your hands up, and I know you're lying, because I know I'm not the only fatty you've ever seen. So, how do I know that? Well, according to the NPD group, over 60% of American women wear a plus size. That's a 14 and up. That's 70 million women in the US who wear plus size clothing. And they spend $18 billion a year on apparel. That's a huge market. So, th there is a problem though. Plus size women consistently struggle to find attractive, well-made apparel that really fits. And you'd think that retailers would be all over them, right? You know, it's a big market, they spend a lot of money, let's really cater to them. But the truth is, it's really hard to find clothes that are great. And uh, they're marginalized and consistently neglected by retailers. In short, plus size shopping really sucks. Now, how do I know that? In my former career, I was director of software sales for uh, a number of companies. I sold to big organizations like Apple, um, American Express, Citigroup, and I live in New York. And I had a hard time finding professional clothes that looked great on me. And I thought, well, wait a second. I live in New York City. This is the fashion capital of the world. Why can't I find clothes? This is nuts. So what happens if you live in Boise or Dallas or Atlanta or Vegas? Where are you shopping? So I realized that my combination of experience in large-scale data systems, combined with my experience as a former CEO of a fashion e-commerce company for six years, made me the perfect person to try solving this problem. So what are we doing to solve the problem? Abby Post is the plus-size fashion revolution. We create and curate a proprietary selection of high-quality, attractive, made-to-measure, plus-size wardrobe basics. Our innovative 3D body scan technology ensures the perfect fit every time. So let me show you how that works. We have a video here. And what you're going to see is this software actually works. It's browser, uh, it's browser dependent, but hardware independent. There's no software to install. And you just basically take two quick images of your body from your own webcam in the privacy of your own home. And you can see this is actually me up here on the screen. And then we're confirming that you know, I was in the right position. And then the next thing that actually happens is we show you your basic measurements, bust, waist, and hip. And then we go out across our marketplace of 120 curated uh, brands, retailers, and boutiques, and we show you the perfect fit for you. So these are size recommendations. So every item has a size recommendation. We've got the size recommendation in that little green bar um, right above where you would actually purchase. So the user uh, automatically knows what size she is in that particular brand. But meanwhile, what we're really doing is collecting 115 detailed data points. They're accurate down to eight millimeters, and they include things like your shoulder breadth, your bicep circumference, the distance from your knee to the floor. So why is that important? Well, what we're doing at Abbey Post 1.0 is the marketplace, as I mentioned. This represents recurring revenue as well as a transaction, a piece of every transaction on the site. But our next phase, which we're really excited to announce here today for the first time at Women 2.0, is Abbey Post Made to Measure. Abbey Post Made to Measure, as I mentioned, is high quality wardrobe basics for the plus size women, and they're all made to measure using those 115 data points. This is a very high margin, low risk business because we're real time manufacturing. And uh, so I want to talk to you a little bit about our customer acquisition, what's really working. Our target market is the Pinterest mom. 
She's 35 and up. She generally has a household income of $75,000 or more. So naturally, Pinterest is a great platform for us and has been very successful. Uh, Facebook as well. We have about 9,000 Facebook followers in the last couple of months. Um, we also have a number of great relationships with bloggers, such as um, plus-size fashion bloggers, mommy bloggers, coupons, things like that, and email marketing. And last but not least, our team. As I mentioned, my name is Cynthia. I have 10 years of experience selling large-scale computer systems. And um, I also previously founded an e-commerce fashion company. My co-founder, Lex, who's down here, and actually, Lex, if you'd join me. Um, Lex is our co-founder and CTO. He's an experienced full-stack web developer. He's a Magento expert. And he's built a number of really innovative visualization technologies in the past. Our advisors are. Um, Catherine Schuler, who is an FIT professor, and she's considered the godmother of plus-size women's fashion. Also, Emmy, who was the first plus-size supermodel and has successfully launched two apparel brands previously. And last but not least, Maria Sutej, who until recently was the vice president of global sales for Avon. So she really understands how to create and motivate a uh, large community of women. So thank you so much for your attention. If you'd like more information, please check us out on AngelList. Hey, questions? <laughs> Are these movable or what do I do? So, yeah. it sounds great, actually. Thank you. Uh, nice big market size. We all love that, I think. Um, what made you decide to launch the custom sort of uh, made to measure product? Great question. Thank you for asking. Um, over the first year or so, that as we were building the marketplace and building out the technology, we did a lot of customer discovery. And we did several hundred interviews directly with consumers. Um, over and over, they told us they're much less interested in fashion, much more interested in apparel, basics that are perfect. So fit is by far the biggest problem that they have. There are lots of sources for plus-size clothing, but the problem is that plus-size apparel or all apparel today, is made based on a fit model, right? So fit models for plus size are generally a size 12, they're about five foot 10, and they're an hourglass shape. The problem with that is that the average American woman is a size uh, 14, she's also five foot four, so she's six inches shorter, <laughs> and 82% of women are a shape other than hourglass. So who the hell are they making these clothes for? So <laughs> obviously they don't really fit anybody, so over and over and over again, we heard from this consumer, they wanted things that were made for them. They wanted things that made sense for their bodies. Nice presentation. Thank you. Um, so uh, with a lot of these businesses where it's a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace, how do you build the density of the sellers, right? So I, um, I think you can attract a lot of users. Can you talk a little bit more about building that community of, of the brands and, and those sellers? Sure, so um, right now we have about 120 um, boutiques, brands, and indie designers. We also have a, a group of brand ambassadors who actually go out and contact these local sources. So the thing is, there are lots of great plus size boutiques, but they're scattered all over the country. And if you don't live within a certain distance of them, you're never gonna find them, right? So what we've done is we've brought in sort of advocates on our behalf, they go out, and they find these um, brands. We do compensate them on commission only, and uh, so that's how we've that's how we've begun to build it. Um, so we're at 120 right now and uh, growing rapidly. That's actually growing 10% week over week, by the way. You're like a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so just echoing everyone's comments. Um, I feel like Aerosmith. There should be a star <laughs> attached to this. <laughs> Anyways, um, so nice job. Definitely great Thank market. You. you know the space. I love your background. You seem to be like the perfect CEO for this. So three things. I have a comment, a question, and then a suggestion. So my comment is what really got me excited, other than everything that you've described, is really the back-end <laughs> analytics. Mm -hmm. I think that could be your super secret sauce on the back-end because you can cross-market to this group of individuals and upsell them and cross-sell them and all this other good stuff. Yep. And data means um, value for the company. So that's a good thing. Um, my suggestion, or not my suggestion, my question is how does the actual IP 
work? Is it based on smartphone technology or can you integrate it with like Xbox and mm -hmm. you know the Xbox Connect program? Sure. And then yeah, so remind me. I'll, I'll, we'll I will I will remind you for the last part. Um, so that's an awesome question. How does it work? It is hardware independent. So today uh, we've launched on the browser-based um, desktop. We do have an iPhone version. We have not released it to the public yet. Um, we're still testing that. We're not using Connect. Um, in tests, it honestly just was not stable enough. So the last part you had? Oh, just real quick. And then I'm One minute remaining. Okay. Oh my Thank God. you. I'm so stressed out. Um, okay. <laughs> Breathe. Um, it's so okay. We have a company in our portfolio that I'm happy to provide an introduction to if you'd like. We actually have two of them. One of them is um, providing sizing for lingerie, mm -hmm. but they are not reaching the plus market yet, so there might be something there. Um, so remind me, and I'll give you the introduction. Okay. That'd be awesome. Thank you. So, this is weird. <laughs> uh, so any any sort of process like this, there's always uh, returns. Can you talk a little bit about Time your assumptions on over. that and how you're going to handle those? Yeah, that's an awesome question. Also, I really like it because it gives me a chance to tell you that um, we are piloting the apparel brand right now. Our gross margins are 65%. The, the timer is a little messed up, so we have like 10 seconds remaining, so wrap it up really quickly. Net margins of 47% mean we can provide Zappos-like levels of service. Thank you so much. Please give her a round of applause. Congratulations. Ready for the next company? Rapid fire. Okay, thank you. Ready? Yes. Please If you welcome. having girl problems, I feel bad for you, son. I got, got 99, 99 problems, problems, but a bitch ain't one. Okay, that's awesome. Please welcome Tara Hunter, Jennifer Fernandez, everyone. I didn't know you had any cool music. That's great. Get on up there. Five minutes on the clock. Hi, everyone. I'm Jenna Fernandez, and I'm the CEO of Carebooker. So what is Carebooker? We are the Expedia for Family Care, where you can find, book, and pay for all types of in-home family care services. And by family care, I mean child care, pet care, tutoring and lessons, housekeeping, and more, all under one roof. Our team launched the first online booking platform for pet care. And we noticed there was a huge opportunity to expand to all types of in-home family care. There are 80 million moms in the US. And the industry that we're focused on, the vertical specifically that we're focused on, are $450 billion a year industry. And it makes sense, because if you think about it, almost everyone has a child, a pet, a house, or an aging parent. We have a dedicated and seasoned team. Myself, I first became a CEO at age 19, running one of the largest student-run businesses in the country. Our CTO is a founder of About.com, and our lead programmer is a specialist in building APIs and online building technologies. Our CFO is a venture capitalist who is currently investing in our round and also incubating us. On our advisory board, we have one of a founding shareholder of Expedia, and also a head of, founding head of sales from Hotwire. And they're both investing in our round. In addition to that, we have the former head of PR from Expedia, who is spearheading our PR campaigns. And the big news is that last week, the founder of Tutor.com, who recently sold his company to IAC, joined our advisory board. So let's talk about old solutions. The old solutions are free and premium directories, but directories are only discovery platforms. They are not booking platforms. Free directories like Craigslist, well, if you've ever tried to find a babysitter on Craigslist, you know it's not only time consuming, but it's really scary. And there's premium directories like Care.com and Sitter City, but they're expensive, almost $40 a month. And once you get there, you can only view profiles. You cannot book interviews online, you cannot book appointments online, and you cannot pay online. We built Carebooker with the modern mom in mind. The modern mom is very busy. She also has certain requirements. 
She requires a heightened level of trust and security. She also prefers to book online and have an online calendar. She wants to pay online because she doesn't carry cash. And most of all, she wants to book all her family care services in one place. There are new solutions, booking platforms for each vertical. CareBooker partners with these booking platforms and also partners with agencies and directories, bringing everything into CareBooker to help a mom go from feeling like this to feeling like this. And it, these partnerships help, help CareBooker a lot too, to scale quickly at reduced costs. So it's not only for the mom that we've built CareBooker, it's also for the care provider. Like Amy. Amy is a babysitter, an SAT prep tutor, and a dog walker. She's doing a lot here. Uh, and she's, she's not alone. Over 33% of service providers do care in more than two sectors. So this is exciting. We have, this is the first time we're showing a preview of our new web 2.0 site that is a lot faster and a lot cleaner and a lot easier to find the care you need. We're going to be launching this in early 2014. And we know that when you're booking care, it's not like booking a hotel room or a rental car. 45 seconds remaining. It really matters about the trust and security that you feel. With certified reviews, background checks, and the ability to book appointments before you book interviews, uh, book interviews before you book appointments through our platform, we give that to parents. We also make it easy to see the services and prices that people provide, and also see their real-time availability. Our Book Now button brings the power of booking and payment into one button that's easy to install on any website. We make revenue in three main ways. Booking fees, on average, we make about $10 per appointment. Monthly subscriptions where there's no booking fees per appointment and partnerships. We have some great key milestones. We have 3,000 care providers on our site. That's time. That's time. Right, thank you, everyone. And if you want to join our journey, please speak with me. Q&A begins now. OK, great. <laughs> can, you, uh, can you talk a little bit more about whether you think you will be competing with these platforms that yeah. are vertical, yep. or whether you think you're sitting on top of them? And if you think you're sitting on top of them, what your relationship with, with the vertical ones that people are building will be? Great. And uh, we're, we're seeing, them, seeing them more as partners. So we're, we're happy that they're there, because we see them as a way to scale our user base really quickly. So I know that in a way, at the beginning, they could be seen as, uh, as competitors, but I see them more as partners that we can work together to make this a better website and to make more money for everyone. How do you uh, sort of get beyond the trust issue? Sure. Uh, yeah. Which I think is sort of the elephant in the room in all of this, right? Sure, for um, trust. I know it's a big thing. You don't want to leave your, your child or your pet with someone you, don't, you can't trust. Um, so on the site, we, we ask specific key questions to get down to the bottom of who is this person and making sure we know their qualifications, their education. Um, but the main things are the key stats that we, we keep on the site are how many times they've been booked, how often they respond to requests, and how often they've been rebooked, because that's really what's going to matter. We also have free background checks that we provide to everyone who joins our platform. So you can see if they have a sex offender background, a criminal background, and if they are who they say they are. And of course, we, we definitely want people to book interviews before they, they book appointments with these individuals. Because just like, anyway, you don't know if they're going to work for your family until you meet them. And that's, that's a big part of the business that we've, we've definitely put a lot of um, time into understanding that that's, that's really important to meet them before you, you actually book an appointment with them. Um, sure. So uh, definitely there's a need for this. Um, it is going to be slightly tough, though, I think, because it's a local, small business, fragmented market. Yes. But out of all of the verticals that you've mentioned, have you been doing any testing on perhaps which ones are converting the best for you? Definitely. Yeah. And or, so let me finish mm -hmm. really quickly, um, should you maybe focus on one of those over the other, like maybe blow out the you know, child care vertical or blow out the pet care vertical and yeah. focus on that? Well, um, our team did found the first online booking platform for pet care. So in a way, we already did that um, through the New York market. And we realized that although that's a great place to start, it's, 
there's, with the care providers providing so many services in different sectors, many of them, we were missing out on a lot of the revenue we could have made from these people. Like, you know, the Amy, the fake provider I put up there, she's, she does three different things, and that's very normal, because a lot of these people are, you know, are doing multiple things. They might be a Spanish, Spanish tutor and be a, a pet care provider and be a babysitter at the same time, and other sites just don't capture that. So if you're using these other sites as your channel and, and, and you're providing services that, that they don't, mm -hmm. where is that data coming from that allows you to book appointments when they obviously don't have that data or else they'd be providing that service already? Um, I'm not 100% sure I understand. I understand your question. And I, maybe I'm confused on how, how do you use your, your, your marketing partners? Our marketing partners, okay, yeah, that's... That's understandable. So we have a middleware platform that we've built underneath the system, which we are able to use to, uh, well, there's an API component and a middleware component. So with the partners, we're partnering with them right now on an individual basis, kind of making individual deals that we can put into like three different segments. <laughs> so we don't have to recreate the wheel every time. But we're able to, and especially with our new platform, really quickly onboard uh, care providers from the other sites that we've agreed with, and then we're taking the data they have, and we can reach out to them to collect more data from them. Um, and then they can, that way we're able to have a booking platform through our website, and we can also, for some provider, for some websites, provide the booking for them. And that's where we really see the future is more than just on our site. So yeah. Would you say your key point of differentiation is the ability to book? I would say that's just one of the key points. I think and the, the aggregation. Of oh, I think that, yeah, the aggregation, the booking, but one we, have minute a, left. we have a really robust back end that we've spent a lot of time on. I think the differentiators aren't only the tech part, but also the people we've brought onto our team, because we have the founder of Tutor.com, and we're looking to bring on, and we have relationships with a lot of people in the sector. So but from a consumer point of view. Oh, from a consumer point of view. Yeah, I'd say it's the aggregation, the booking and payment, and we're going to be able to really bring those all into one place so you can manage your entire family's life uh, in terms of booking for care through the site. So from a consumer point of view, I think that's, those are the differentiators. So I guess if there's no more, uh, are there any more questions? There's no more questions. Okay. Round of applause, please. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for putting that to me. Yeah. Uh, our next pitcher is uh, Jess Brando from Admittedly. My name is Jess Brando, and I'm the founder and CEO of Admittedly, which is revolutionizing college advising for high school students, their parents, and guidance counselors. Now, I wanted to start off by alarming you. 476 to 1 represents the average ratio of high school students to guidance counselors in this country. What's even more astounding is that only 27% of high schools have a dedicated college advisor, which means that 73% of those high schools don't have anyone advising these students. So we have more students than ever before applying to college, and yet districts like Philadelphia announced that they cut every single guidance counselor from their entire district. Now, I first got excited about this massive market opportunity back in 2005, just a year after I graduated from Princeton, when I started my first company, The Edge in College Prep, which is a successful private college admissions counseling company as well as a test prep company, where I work with students from over 14 countries and help them all get into one of their top three schools. I'm extremely still excited about this massive market because there are 12 million college-bound high school students in this country, and they're spending $4 billion a year on the college prep industry. However, there's a massive gap in this market. And the problem with the market with private counselors is the price tag. The price tag for a private college admissions counseling package ranges from two to $50,000 which I'm sure we can all agree is unattainable for most high school students out there. 
And if you think about the products that are available to those students who can't afford those packages, they're pretty dismal. Students are still using things like the Fisk Guide and US News and World Report, which I'm sure we can all remember using back in the day when we thought beepers were cool. Well, we had admittedly realized that beepers are no longer cool. And we're addressing this massive gap in the market by incorporating the psychology of decision making through OkCupid-like okay personality questions that help students discover ideal universities for them based on their in interesting personality and interest data. And then we help them determine whether those schools fall into their reach, target, or safer categories based on their high school resume data. And then we're the only site out there that provides tools for students at an early enough age so that we can give them meaningful recommendations on how they can improve their chances of admission. And lastly, we have three different types of user accounts for high school students, parents, and counselors, and seamlessly integrate all of them across all of our platforms. We're the exact team that needs to be addressing this problem. In addition to my domain experience, my co-founder, Emily Cole, has a master's in child psychology and a PhD in, pers in personality psychology as well as psychometric testing, and will be psychoanalyzing all of you later. But she's also had over 10 years experience teaching children from ages four to students at 18. Our product dream team includes Seth Samuel, who's our lead developer, Valerie Lisiansky, who's our UI UX designer, and Nick Dedjewel, who's our senior mobile engineer. And we recently brought on Emily Elliott as our community manager. Now, I'm sure you're all wondering how we're going to make money. Well, we didn't want to be just another college search site to sell, to sell our students' data to universities. We wanted to build a valuable product that high school students and their parents would actually pay for, and we'll be used, utilizing a freemium model, and we'll be charging a $19.99 subscription fee per semester. So far, we launched our public beta in late September and had a tremendous response from our student users. And we're extremely excited to announce that we'll be onboarding 75,000 students to the platform later this month through a really amazing partnership with a big district on the East Coast, which will be announced very shortly. We've already closed on $550,000 from investors like RRE, Joanne Wilson, and Quotidian, and couldn't be more excited about who's backing us. I'm sure that we can all agree that high school students deserve something more than an 800-page paperback guide to help them with one of the biggest decisions of their lives, and admittedly is the team to do it. Thank you so much, and can't wait to take your questions. Q&A begins now. Great presentation. Um, just a quick question. Can you explain the subscription model? So if I'm a student, I pay $19.99 a month, and I get what beyond the, I mean, it seems like it's a one-time. Um, oh, OK, yes. So uh, it's not $19.99 per month. It's $19.99 per semester. And so what we're building, the site now, the MVP, is focused mainly on the college search and discovery um, and college list building. However, the full feature set of tools and content and exercises will be launching in early 2014. And we're having specific tools for students uh, starting in the summer before ninth grade going all the way up to the time when they make their actual decision. And so to access the relevant timely tools for each semester of high school, it's $19.99. For someone who starts early enough, they can purchase access to all of the levels of the product uh, for a discounted rate. Um, can you clarify the addressable? It's We've met before, but anyway, so, can, can you clarify the actual addressable market? So, you know, there's this tier of folks who pay a lot of money, they're not going to use this because, or they may use it as an ancillary tool, but maybe not. Then there's people who maybe can't even afford some of this, right? So what, and, and how much of that four billion number is in that addressable market, and how much of that is test prep, actually, or is any of that test prep? Yeah, so in terms of the way that we've sort of segmented the market of the 12 million college-bound high school students, um, there's obviously the elite students who are currently using the private counselors, and having worked with over 1,000 students 
um, at my company who've ranged from New York to London to South America, those are the types of families who will, will buy you know, 10 books when you tell them that they only need one because the more the better. So we definitely don't think that this product will be lost on them. It will be an enhancement tool that students can use to track things even while they're working with the private counselor. Um, so we definitely will be addressing that market. The bottom half of the market who are students who may not even be thinking about college or maybe thinking only about a community college um, will also be a portion of the students we're addressing, but the core students who we're addressing initially are those students kind of in the middle range, and that's the largest segment of the market, who are students who can't afford the private counselors, but who don't have access to personalized guidance from their guidance counselor. And that uh, we've estimated at being around 7 million of those 12 million high school students. Um, and then in terms of the $4 billion, that does include um, some test prep in there. Um, so it's a combination of test prep, private admissions counseling, essay editing, um, and books and, and resources as well. So great presentation. Thank you. It was you. really engaging. Um, I, I liked everything. I liked the slides. I liked the fact that you knew all your stats, it was all, it was all good. Thanks. Um, question though, um, the actual technology that's running behind the scenes, um, is there any IP around it? And then from a consumer user perspective, how easy and engaging is it? Um, and how do you continue to keep, you know, these teenage kids engaged and wanting to sit down and spend time to use the program? Are there, can you talk about that? Sure, so in terms of the IP around it, uh, the product is completely automated through algorithms. And so uh, the initial algorithm from our MVP is patent pending, and then as we launch the additional algorithms in early 2014, we plan on um, filing for patent for those as well. And then in terms of the engagement, that's why we really found it important to engage a UI UX designer from the get-go. And so in terms of how we're uh, designing One minute remaining, one minute remaining. Um, and in terms of how we're designing the platform to engage students, um, it's very, very much, uh, we're taking a lot of pages out of video games. Um, students create an avatar when they log on to our platform, so it's automatically personalized. And then there are certain components where if you do one task or complete one exercise, it unlocks something else. Um, any time on the mobile device that they check into something like basketball practice or a volunteer opportunity, they're earning points that will go towards um, different badges and achievements on the site that will unlock other 20 things. 20 seconds. Um, so yeah, so we're definitely building in the, uh, the engagement tools there. Great. Great. Thanks. Thanks so much. Our next person who's pitching is, uh, is Allie Downey from WeSpring. Please give her a round of applause. Hi, I'm Allie Downey. I'm the CEO and founder of WeSpring and we bring trust to online reviews by connecting them with your social network. We focus on parents because more than any other audience, they're hungry for trusted advice. Everything you buy for your family is a high stakes purchase. And you have to make a lot of decisions about these products. Average family spends $5,000 on baby products in year one alone. And this is where you buy them. It's completely overwhelming for the first time parent to walk into a Babies R Us and see this zoo. And they get home and start sending emails to their friends to get advice. Because when it comes down to it, anonymous online reviews are simply not enough when it comes to making decisions for your family. So parents make lists. And then they collect lists from their friends to get advice from them about the products that they need. Sorry, we're having a clicking problem here. And it's completely overwhelming. So we built WeSpring to give consumers, and parents specifically, a simple, social, and fun way to collect advice from their friends about what they need for their family. 
getting consumers to connect their social networks. Sorry, guys. Getting consumers to connect their social networks with their e-commerce is a tall order, but we've accomplished it because we have built an identity of trust with our users. So we're an independent upstart, and we're for parents by parents. We focus on the essentials. We like to say that we're practical, not aspirational, which means that activity on WeSpring actually signals purchase intent. And we give consumers a really easy and fun way to engage on the site. So gone are the star ratings that are arduous and require a lot of forethought. We make everything binary. So you have a product or you want it. And if you have it, you can add that you love it or regret it. We cap comments at 250 characters, so it's even easier than writing two tweets. So we've been live since January, and we're going 25% month over month. We're spending minimally on marketing, but we're doubling every quarter. And what's most exciting is that today, we're getting new reviews in at three times the rate of Amazon on the products on our site. And that's why top brands and baby are really excited to be working with us. Which brings me to the business model. While we look like a consumer-facing product, we're actually a data and analytics company that is powered by parents. Baby business in particular is really fragmented, and there are thousands of brands who are vying for consumers' attention in a really short span of time. Word of mouth recommendations are critically important to them, and we amplify them. So we shift the conversations from one-to-one -one text messages to a broadly accessible database. We also can predict purchasing behavior by analyzing a consumer's friends, loves, and must-haves. And we deliver consumer insights that they simply don't have access to right now because they don't have direct-to-consumer relationships. So for brands who are desperate for this kind of advice, we charge monthly subscription services ranging from $1,000 for startups to $100,000 for major CPGs for data and analytics, consumer insights, content syndication, and lead generation. We did a bottom-up analysis of the brands on WeSpring today and see a $25 million opportunity, and we'll get there within three years. But that's just the beginning. Having a baby is one of the few life moments when everything changes for a consumer, and we're capturing them at that critical time. So we're going to grow minute, with the families. Remaining. We're going to grow with the families who are on WeSpring and move into the categories that they care about. So today it's a Bugaboo stroller, tomorrow it's a Dyson vacuum cleaner, and in a couple years it's a Volvo Cross Country. Online reviews are a billion dollar business. This is a team with deep experience in word of mouth marketing and the technical skills to deliver on big ideas. I got my exposure to peer to peer marketing and politics, running political campaigns, but I also bring both an MFA in writing and an MBA to the table. So not only do I know how to drive content, I know how to monetize it. My co founder, Melissa, was a lead for Amex's card member site 20 redesign. Seconds. And that went on to win the JD Power Award for customer satisfaction. Jack was the uh, lead for New York State's digital marketing. We have an amazing team of engineers behind us and a powerhouse board of advisors. Uh, so we are, um, we've already hit major milestones. We have 60,000 product reviews on the site. Uh, and we are focusing on our iOS build. We bridge the gap between where people That's are sharing time. and where people are shopping. Thank you. Where we spring. Five minutes for questions. Can you talk a little bit about um, how long the tail is on the products that are being reviewed? Absolutely. So today we have 2,500 products on the site. Uh, Baby is a huge long tail business, but we have really been intentional in curating a list that are the products that are most relevant to our user base. Everything that's on the site has been suggested by one of our users. So we started with an initial base of 300 products, and there's a button on the site where people can add, and that's how we grew from 300 to 2,500. So how do you connect the requests from the users to the brands for the analytics that's actually your paying customer if, if it's just users that are giving you that feedback? So it's, um, it's a, a, a little bit of an angel list type uh, double opt-in communications system. Uh, we are going to be launching it in about six months, and it will give brands the opportunity to look at people who've reviewed certain products and communicate with them that way. 
you might have already touched on this, but maybe you can re remind me again. So from a revenue generation standpoint, if these parents are recommending products, um, do they get rewarded monetarily as well as, you know, just becoming like a peer reviewer out there, like an Amazon review kind of thing? It's a really great question. Yeah. So we thought at the outset that we might need to do some kind of incentives to get people to rate products. What we found is it's not necessary. We're building incentives in to get people to invite their friends, but the reality is because of that same behavior that they're engaging in with the Excel spreadsheets, they come in, they sit down, they rate 50 product reviews in one sitting. Average user on our site has rated 10, and we have so many who rated more than 50, we had to completely overhaul our UX. So they're doing it out of a sense of altruism, and I actually think it would really hurt. Uh, it would hurt the company and it would hurt the, the brand for us to start rewarding for reviews. Is there any, um, I don't know, I don't know how to say this exactly, sort of a social verification that goes on in the process. So um, I think it, maybe this is more of a suggestion if you don't have it, but like as a parent, I value more highly reviews of people I know, obviously. Especially with, the, this is not just going to a restaurant or even staying at a hotel for totally. a night. This is a product that your child will interact with that's pretty high stakes, actually. Um, so ha is there a way that folks know if they're connected in some way to the person who's reviewing or something, something that makes it safer feeling. Absolutely. So um, so about half of our users have logged in through Facebook Connect, uh, and when they do that, they're seeing reviews from their friends first. So when you look at a car seat, you see the four car seats most popular with your friends. It's what I wanted when I was pregnant. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, thank you all very much. What's your name? Oh, Morgan Gibbs. Keep it going for her. Yay! The next person who will be pitching is Morgan Giddings from Daily Dollar. Morgan, the CEO and founder of Daily Dollar. We are lifting the power of the receipt. So chances are, if many of you were to reach into your wallets or purses, you would find a pile of crumpled receipts. That's what we solve for. Turns out, we're not the only ones. It's what I've dubbed the Constanza wallet syndrome, and it's sweeping the nation. That's what we solve. Part of the problem is the discrepancy of information between your receipt, which is skew level detail, it's line item, and what you can see on your bank or credit card statement. That's what we solve. The cool thing is, is you don't have to enter in your email, which everybody thinks. We do it through your normal payment card, the debit and credit card that you're already using. So you register that card one time. That's it. Then you use that card as normal, and then you have your receipts linked to your bank or your credit card statement. So how we do it? We work with your uh, bank to auto-enroll you, your bank or your credit card. We then work with the point of sale vendors, online or offline, to capture those receipts. That's where receipts come from, is at the point of sale or point of purchase. We then link your receipt to your account so that you can access it anytime, anywhere, for whatever reason you need a receipt, whether it's a business expense, return, warranty, or really anything you want to use a receipt for. We're taking you today uh, from this world that we all live in to the digital world where everything else is. There's no better time than today to make this happen. We've already uh, been working on this for the past year and a half to lay down the tracks with the point of sale vendors. We've chosen the top five to capture 80% of your wallet share. So that's a majority of the places where you would use that card. Uh, we're working with brands, uh, banks, and card associations to make this hap happen because it has to be widespread for it to work. So consumers, they love it because it solves a very big pain point. It's always the receipt you need is the one you can't find. So imagine having a static location to be able to look up those details. Merchants are excited about this because, believe it or not, they want to enhance your customer experience. The other cool thing that we do is we have the most unique data set that's ever been collected on consumer spend. 
It's line item across industries. So we can work with merchants to match make things that you want to buy with things that they should be giving you. The point of sale vendors love us because they're looking for cloud-based solutions to enhance their market offer to their own clients who are the merchants. And merchants are looking for a digital receipt solution. The only option available today is an emailed receipt where you have to enter in your email. And that doesn't work for a lot of industry scenarios like petroleum, convenience, or quick serve restaurants. The data set that we have puts a smack dab in the middle of a large and growing uh, marketplace. It's data analytics, but it's also in place of consumer branding and marketing. We're working with, the, with top brands, top third party companies, and sophisticated merchants in this industry in order to bring a very customized experience for each customer. There's been no other time to make this happen. The transition is happening both on the consumer side and on the market side. Point of sale vendors are realizing that they have to change and they're already opening up this data set uh, to third parties like our company. Many people have tried to enter this space. A lot of the card brands actually have recently within the past year launched a receipt app where they make you the consumer do all the work. I hope that you guys have something better to do with your time than take pictures of receipts. With our solution, you don't need to do anything. Those receipts will automatically be captured for you. As I said, we're working with the top point of sale vendors to make this happen, and we're also working with the top brands and card associations. Uh, we're a small team. It's myself and a developer, a co-founder, and we're looking to expand. One so minute remaining. If you know any good designers, uh, that's one thing that we're looking for right now. Uh, Kyle comes from the point in, uh, embedded space at Microsoft. Uh, he has just about eight years of experience. 70% of all point of sale uh, operations run on an uh, MS solution, uh, embedded systems. So over uh, the past year and a half, we filed a, a patent, a provisional patent, and we were awarded by Concur, which is a leading travel and expense management, uh, the most innovative solution uh, in the industry. So we're Daily Dollar lifting the power of the receipt, and you can go sign up for our beta right now. Uh, we're live in the Seattle area, uh, but we'll expanding nationally, so. It's for questions. So on the integration with the point of sale side, um, you said you launched in Seattle. What's the actual coverage look like for somebody who enrolls their card? We're building out for 80%. So the top five point of sale vendors that we worked with, and we haven't announced our uh, partnerships formally, uh, but that will allow us to capture that 80%. What we're doing in Seattle is we're testing the threshold of where it becomes interesting to the consumers. Is it 30%, 40%? When do you start talking about it? Uh, and that's what we're doing. We're based in Seattle, so we want to get that market share around there, test that threshold before we go to launch nationally. And, and the partnerships? that would give you 80% coverage are in place, or are there partnerships that you're hoping to put in place? In development. Can you explain a little more of how you work with business users? So um, you mentioned Concur, that's the company that my company uses. It's, awesome. It's awful. Yep. Um, and so how they are you are. working with them to make it better? Yes, that's where why they chose us as the most innovative solution because they realize it's a pain point for uh, business travelers when you have to come home with a Ziploc full of receipts that half are missing, half you don't know. Uh, that's what we're solving. So we would push receipts to them automatically. So either you can log in if you have a hybrid card, so which uh, is personal and business use, or if you have a business card, you can flag that on our system and we'll automatically push those business uh, purchases to concur or any expense management company automatically. So that's a partnership that's in development with them to do that. Yeah. That's it? Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, outside of money, what's the most challenging part of what you need to do next? <sighs> That's a good question. Uh, hiring, I would say. Uh, we're in Seattle, there's a great pool of talent up there, but finding the people that we want to bring onto the team uh, just takes a while to find those, make sure that you have the right team in place. Um, what, what would you hire them to do then? I'm assuming those hires will be doing the most important work, so what's, what's that piece that's most important? Uh, industry experience, so working with embedded systems within point of sale uh, is a very key thing that we're looking for right now on the technical side, the technical component. Designer uh, is going to be also our next hire, so two developers and a designer. Um, 
but industry knowledge and experience. Um, nice job. I love the Seinfeld reference. That's my Thank favorite you. episode. <laughs> the fat wallet, yes. So um, we kind of talked about it, but I love the fact that this solution can be integrated. I'm assuming it can also be integrated into like Mint or Expensify or any of these, or even Google Wallet. Maybe? All of the above. Okay. All That's of awesome. the above, yeah. Um, but what about like, uh, sorry, I ask this question across the board. I'm really into analytics. But from an analytics perspective, can the user and or, you know, a business um, track your expenses and then like graph these expenses and look for spending patterns and anything like that I think would be really valuable going forward. So. Our UI is built to do that actually. We have a coming soon section and that's what we want. Fact of the day, uh, drill down. If you go to Starbucks, it doesn't necessarily mean that you purchased a latte. You could get food. So we need to dissect that and really understand where consumers are purchasing and what, what they're getting uh, and doing really cool stuff like that. And we're in development with Intuit. So all of their quick, quick win and QuickBooks and it. Anything else? That's it? All right. DailyDollar.com. Sign up. Thank you all. Thank you so much. That was great. Amazing. Uh, could we have a round of applause for everyone that pitched, please? And make it really loud.